Hi and welcome to my adopted hometown of Chiang Mai. If you flew into Chiang Mai International Airport, once you go through customs and you get your luggage, you're going to be standing exactly where I am right here. And if you're lucky, you've got a beautiful Thai girlfriend waiting for you. But if not, you're stuck with me. <laughs> Sorry about that. But hey, bang, bang, bang. I'm going to give you exactly what you need to know to start off your trip here to Chiang Mai in a great way. Number one, we're going to talk about how to get transportation out of the airport. We're going to cover all your options. We're going to talk about how to get a SIM card so you can start making phone calls and using your phone, get the internet. And we're going to talk about how to get Thai Bot in your pocket as inexpensively as possible. We're going to cover all that and also we're going to talk about what is a bum gun and how do you use it. Are you ready? Let's get going. So let's talk about your different transportation options out of the airport. If you're a solo traveler, the cheapest way to go is take the shuttle. And it's pretty convenient. It's right at the exit to the international terminal site. It only costs 50 baht and they'll bring you directly to your hotel. The disadvantage is, is they won't leave until they have at least six passengers. And it's really only a good deal if you're by yourself. If you've got a group, you'll find out it's not really the most economical option. And you probably don't want to wait. The next option, and the one that probably most people take, is a taxi. They've got a booth at both the international side and the domestic side. You simply go up, you tell them where your hotel is or where you want to go. It's always 150 baht if it's in the central area, 200 baht if it's a little bit outside of the area. You don't pay at the counter, but they'll give you a ticket. You take that to the end of the terminal on the domestic side, and there you'll hand it to a lady who will then tell you when your driver pulls up and easy as can be. Uh, you'll pay the driver directly. Um, the fee is the same whether you're one person or four. That's why I mentioned the shuttle's not always the cheapest option. Um, tipping, by the way, is completely optional here. Um, ties typically don't tip, um, or if they do, it's just a little bit of uh, edging up. One pretty common option when you travel is to rent a car, and you can certainly do that here, and it's really not very costly. Um, the average daily cost for a car is roughly about 1,000 baht to 1,200 baht, and that includes insurance. Um, they've got the normal you know, companies you see, Avis and Hertz and all those. Um, here's the company that I would actually recommend you go to just because they're independent, they're a little bit cheaper, and they'll actually negotiate sometimes a little bit if you use a little bit of charm. Um, they didn't lower my rate, but as I said, <laughs> you have to have a little bit of charm. Uh, but uh, I would recommend, seriously, you don't rent a car, at least not your first few days in Thailand. And the reason for that is it's really difficult driving in Thailand. People drive on the left side of the road, which is not something we're used to in America. The steering wheel's on the right, and Thai drivers are a little bit on the, the crazy side. So as you'll find out in a minute, there's a lot of options for transportation once you're in town that are really gonna be a lot more sensible than renting a car. Getting a SIM card here so that you can have internet access and using a phone is super cheap. You can buy a eight day SIM card with good speed for about 300 baht here. There's all kinds of different providers. There's DTAC, there's AIS. AIS is the best. Uh, there's, there's three or four companies you're gonna find here and they're all about the same. You can actually save money if you get that same SIM card, not in the airport, but if you go to the mall, if you go to one of the stores of the different carriers, they'll be about half the price they are here. But let's face it, uh, an eight day SIM card for 300 baht, I mean, that's $8. <laughs> I mean, go ahead and get it here and start using your phone and the internet. Um, so they'll help you out if you don't have a little uh, you know, pin to open up your phone to, uh, to replace your SIM card. They'll do that for you. They'll get it going. They're really, really helpful. How about getting some Thai bot? Because I bet you can't wait to get into town and start eating some delicious Thai food, maybe some street food. But do me a favor, don't buy any elephant pants. Because let me tell you, Everybody's laughing at you. So you've got a couple options here in terms of getting uh, your money converted to Thai baht. If you've got actual currency, you can go to a currency exchange booth. They've got a few banks here. They all have a slightly different rate, so just look and compare. They'll have a buy and a sell rate. Uh, you're going to be getting the buy rate because you're buying Thai baht. Surprisingly, the rate that you get is the same at the airport 
as it is in town. I've checked it several times and I've never found it to be lower at the airport, which I found to be the case in, in other countries. If you want to get Taibot via your credit card or your debit card, then of course you're going to be using an ATM machine. And they're all over the airport, but the main repository of them is towards the domestic end. They've got several different banks that you can choose from. They're all going to have about the same fee, which is 220 baht for the transaction. The fee's going to be the same whether you take out 1,000 baht or 10,000 baht, so you might as well take out more and save yourself a little bit of money. Um, some of them will also charge, in fact, I should say really now all of them charge it, um, a credit card fee. That's actually not being charged by the ATM or their bank, it's charged by your bank. So that's gonna be four and a half or 5%. Our last stop before we leave the airport is the men's room right behind me. And if you're wondering why are we going to the men's room, it's because if you've never been to Thailand before, there's a few things about the bathrooms that you should know. And if you haven't already liked this video, now's the time to give me a like because you owe it to me. <laughs> because I've learned from experience, carrying a video camera uh, into a men's room is very likely to get you a punch in the nose. So, uh, <laughs> so let's see how this goes. Okay. Okay, so far so good, nobody here. So the first thing to know is, although here, airport bathroom, nice and clean, um, there's toilet paper. But be prepared if your first toilet is not in the airport, be very prepared that there will be no toilet paper in the bathroom. <laughs> or if they have toilet paper, it's not in the actual stall, it's out by the sink and you've got to get it before you come in the stall. So it's a really good idea in Thailand, um, especially in small restaurants and things like that, that you have some toilet paper or a napkin or something in your pocket. Lesson number two, this is a bum gun. It's got a little uh, thing right there to hang it from. So in Thailand, you're not supposed to put toilet paper down the toilet. Um, they've got like a little special, you know, waste basket that you put it in. So you clean your backside with what they call a bum gun. So it's got a little trigger and you just hold it behind you and you clean yourself um, and then put the toilet paper in the dispenser. But here's the cautions I want to give you. Again, not going to happen at the airport, but maybe your first bathroom stop won't be here. What is, before you spray this up on your butt, is you squirt it down into the toilet first just to see how strong the spray is. Because once in a while you'll get one so strong, I swear it'll rip you a new anus. So <laughs> you got to be careful. And the other thing is in some like small hotels and small restaurants, they've got a water tank on the roof. So if you come in the summertime, that water comes out boiling hot. So just a two little, two little uh, bathroom safety tips for you there. The terminal here is super easy to navigate. It's basically one very long hallway. Um, I would say it's about four football fields long and it's just a continuous straight shot. It's all on one floor. Um, they do have a second floor, but it's just uh, gates for departure. So everything you do when you land here, you're gonna end up exactly where I am right now. I'll give you a little diagram that I made. It's not exactly to scale because as I said, it's very long and very narrow but it'll show you where the international terminal is at one end, the domestic at the other, and in the middle, you'll find all of your ticket agents and various services that are offered. All right, congratulations, you made it out of the airport. You've got a SIM card in your phone, you've got Thaibot in your pocket. You may be safely used the bum gun. <laughs> it's only about a 10 minute drive into the old city if there's not too much traffic, and that's where we are right now. Um, before we go, we'll give you a couple recommendations because maybe the first thing you want to do when you arrive is, is get some lunch or dinner. And uh, we'll give you a couple uh, recommendations. In fact, I'm going to leave that up to my Tirak. Uh, uh -oh. Give us a couple to. places. If you feel hungry and want to have a very simple Thai food, I recommend you go to the restaurant called It's Good Kitchen. It's just uh, right in front of Wat Prasi. 
impressive temple. It's not very fancy, right? But you won't be disappointed having meals at that restaurant. Good food, good taste, and good deal. If you want to have a little bit more fancy meal, go to um, Fern Forest Cafe. Uh, it's not far from its good kitchen, only 10 minutes on foot, and you can relax in the very nice ambience. So I told you I would tell you about Grab and Bolt, Thailand's version of Uber. All you've got to do is download the app and give them a little information about yourself. It's easy to use. First, I'm going to enter where I want to go. I'm going to put in one Niman, which is a shopping center here. It now tells us the time to get there and our vehicle options. If you're a solo traveler and there's rush hour traffic, selecting uh, riding on the back of a motorcycle can get you there faster. I'm going to select economy for 85 baht. It tells me where the car is and how many minutes away and I click confirm. You'll then get a confirmation message that your ride has been uh, confirmed and at that point you'll see who your driver is. It'll give you their picture, uh, the model of their car and the color and the license plate number and you also have uh, an option at this point to directly message the driver so that comes in handy if you want to tell them specifically where to pick you up and it will be automatically translated from English into Thai for your driver and if they message you back that'll be in English for you as well. Hello, my name is Jo. Just Bo? Okay. Well, that wraps us up for your first hour in Chiang Mai, um, unless you're going to stick around to watch out about how to arrive by train. So we'll cover that for you. But otherwise, you have permission to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I recommend you better uh, keep watching. Um, yeah, one funny thing about the train station is it's the cheapest place in town to rent a motorcycle. Um, it's 150 baht. Every place else in town is 250. So there's a little uh, incentive maybe to watch the next uh, 90 seconds. It's a really short segment. But anyway, we're going to say bye right now. Um, so great to have you with us. Uh, check out our other videos um, because while you're here in Chiang Mai, they're really informative. They've, we've got one on the best breakfast, uh, the best coffee shops, some things to do. So check them out. So thanks for watching. Until we see you again, safe, safe travels. travels. You might come in by train, so let's check out the train station. It's a real small station. There's no rental car, there's no money exchange. Out in front, to get a ride into town, you can get a Song Tao, the red taxi trucks. There's also a motorcycle rental place, which is actually the least expensive place I've ever found in Chiang Mai. We are here at train station in Chiang Mai. For rent a bicycle, we have start from 150 baht per day. Thank you. All right, that's all there is to say about the train station. <laughs> There's not too much to talk about there. So this is the end of this video. Um, thanks for watching. This is a kind of an awkward ending because I already said goodbye at the end of the last segment about the airport. So this kind of reminds me of the end of the Ferris Bueller movie at the end when he comes out and says, You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Ready? Come on. Come on, stop it. All right. Joy is being silly. Um, so we were just at the international exit.